Hi everybody, Jo here. So you know what that means. It's time for another little crafty catch up. Um, if you've got a nice brew, although I have to say it's a beautiful day here today in Cheshire in the UK. So I think it might be a nice glass of water today. And um, I think it's one of those days. Nice, nice to have some sun. Just cheer us all up a bit. So today I'm coming along to just do um, my favourite types of designs really. It's a clean and simple but with a ping of colour. Um, so I hope if you've got some craft tools you can join me. We can have a little catch up as we go along the way. If you don't have the same stamps as me, the same stencil, don't worry. Just use what you've got. It's nice that we can just have a little bit of a, a catch up. Today I'm going to be using stamps and stencils from All and Create. And I do like to make this type of, of design. And the two pieces of card I'm starting off with are 19 centimetres by 13 and 15 centimetres by 9. And these are actually going on. The card blank I've got, um, it's a larger card than you normally get. Um, I spotted them in one of my local shops before lockdown. I mean, it's just a nice size. They're actually measure... So it's just under six inches that way. And I think, is it, yeah, just over eight inches that way. So I'm not exactly sure what size you'd call them. I suppose, I don't know, eight by. It's difficult, it didn't actually have a name. You know, like we have DL and I suppose it's, a, it's an eight by six, eight by five and a half, eight by six-ish. But it is just such a lovely size. But obviously um, you can, whatever size card you've got, what I tend to do is start with my card blank and then, cut my card according so obviously I just knew that I wanted two mats and layers for this size so I just cut these to how I thought they looked good so again there's no you don't have to do this exactly the same you just cut I just fancied doing two um, and often we mat and layer with black but I didn't want to today I wanted to keep it nice and fresh just for a change nice to do something for a bit of a change isn't it so I hope you like it and I hope you're going to craft along with me. And as always, I'd love to see what you do. I mean, if you're on Facebook, um, we have an All and Create Fanatics group. And I'd really love to see if, if you create something, if you pop it on there and tag me in. It's so exciting. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the background first. And I'm going to use this stencil. It's quite um, one of the earlier stencils. And it's number 61. And it's called Circle Chain. I have a thing about circles and, and, and splodges, so this is perfect for me. So as I say, it's number 61. Quite one of the earlier ones, obviously the lower numbers. And what I'm going to do is just place it across. And again, you know me, I have a thing about diagonals. Now my two colours, I'm using Oxide, just because they're on my desk. You could use Distress Inks, whatever you've got. And I'm going for this Kitsch Flamingo, love this colour, and Wilted Violet. Um, I did a sample a couple of weeks ago in purple and yellow, and it really just set me going on purple and yellow. So I thought we'd add a bit of pink to the mix, just to mix it up a bit, just because we can. Now I'm not going to take my stencil down, I probably should. So because I'm going to have to hold it with my hand, I'm just going to load up my tools first. So I'm just going to circular motion so we get a nice even blend of ink on there. There we go. And I'm just, as I say, what you have to watch with this is not to go over the edges here. So be mindful. You could put a post-it note there or a piece of low-tack tape. Um, I've got to be honest, I'm going to wing it and I'm not going to. So if I regret it and if I get lines, I will just add more lines and make it look like it's part of my design. So that's some pink. And then I'm going to go in and just blend in a bit of purple around the pink. Again, trying to not go. It's amazing what you can do with one hand. You get used to uh, just using one hand. Right, so let's just lift it up. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And we didn't go over. As I say, if you went over, I would just add a few more lines and make it look like it was part of the design. So I just want a few on here as well. So all I'm going to do is pop this. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't match perfectly. Well, in fact, I don't intend it to match perfectly. So I'm just going to put that in the middle. And then I'm going to go with pink at each end. So I'm just going to add some pink 
at this end. And again, I don't need to go across the middle because I know that my, um, my top is going over that. Let's have a look. And if we put our topper on there, and I purposely wanted purple and then going on to the pink. So I'm happy with that. Now, what I do want to do is just add, um, I'm going to put my stencil down. Now, again, in a good old fashioned, I'll spray the back of it and put it on a, on a piece of paper. My original one look, I spritzed and put on and you get this lovely effect. So again, that's a great topper for later. Now I want to just add some little flicks. So I'm just going to put a little bit of, oh, shall I go, no, let's go purple. I'm just going to put the lids on my ink pads. <clears throat> and again, just pick some of that ink up and just add a few more. And then I want to do that now so that they can just, I can put them to one side to dry. You know what it's like. I never have enough one side. <laughs> on my original, at the same time, I added a few on my card blank. Just to carry the design. Now you could keep the stenciling going if you wanted. I just added the splats. Now what we need to do is stamp our flowers and our butterfly. So the butterfly is from a stamp set and I wanted to use this again because I used it the other day if you joined me. It's called Through the Meadow and it's 449. Again, all in Create and it's just this butterfly here. I must admit, I had the choice of two butterflies but I went for the easier one to cut out and that's the honest truth. They're both beautiful. And then I wanted to team it up with some flowers. So I went for flowers off this set. And this is 441 called Lotus Clusters. This is Baby Pasha. And I just thought this here, that went so well. And I love this bit of writing here. And again, what's lovely about this is when we're mixing our Tracy Evan designs with Bipasha, with I think the stencil might have even been Ada. It's so nice that you can do this. That's what's lovely about mixing and matching. So what I'll do is I'm just going to grab my stamping mat. You know what I'm like, it's my copy of paper and it lives on the floor next to me. So I just have to, not enough room on my desk for it, I'm afraid. So... On a piece of spare card, I'm going to stamp the flowers out. Again, using my Versafine Clay, my black ink. Using my All and Crate block. Again, remember, it's flexible. You can give it a bit of a flex. And I must admit, when I'm stamping flowers like this, while I've got ink on my stamp, I would normally stamp this a couple of times on here. And then I've actually got myself a topper for another card. But I want the butterfly as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut this and I'll explain why. So I just want the butterfly. So for this, I'm actually going to take the card to the stamp this way, just because I find it easier. You could do it the normal way. So, if I lift that off, there we've got the butterfly. Now, I'm a bit obsessed. You see this little bit here? Now, when we had our catch-up the other day and I called it ticker tape, I don't know why, it just reminds me of, and I can't think of the word, but I love that. And what I tend to do when I've got this stamp out, I get any, oh, look at that, any odd bit of card, and I've got a bit obsessed with inking that area up and then literally making myself look. And I go along and make myself a whole row of these now, they do look lovely with clear embossing powder on, like we did the other day. 
we did them on vellum didn't we but just in black ink and again while you've got your stamp out and your ink pad and look just on an odd scrap now let me put my lid on my ink pad because you know I'll end up with it everywhere with those I keep them for my embellishments so if we go back to our original if I show you here and here that's what I've done just cut them out so while I'm doing it, it's handy for me to make myself a few of these so that, you know, sometimes when you've got a design and you want that bit extra, these, perfect, cut them out. As I say, you can emboss them. We could put um, glossy accents on them. You don't have to, but you could if you wanted. But you've got ready-made embellishments. So, you know, why, why wouldn't you? Now, what we want to do now <clears throat> is go to our original piece and it's not quite dry so I'm just going to put the heat tool over it so do excuse the noise I have got this as I say this ranger one which is a bit quieter so it's better for these when we have our little catch-ups nothing worse than not being able to speak to somebody because they can't hear you <laughs> although I have to say today most of my neighbours are gardening so <laughs> I've shut my window on my door Otherwise, I think all you'd hear would be lawn mowers and hedge trimmers. But it's lovely, isn't it? Spr well, obviously, we're in spring here. I know those of you in sort of Australia, New Zealand, you're in, going into your autumn, aren't you? Mind you, I've got to be honest, I love autumn. In fact, they're probably my two favourite months, spring and autumn. It's almost those times of change, isn't it? Right, so what I want to do now is stamp the flowers on here now you know me I have to stamp sideways so where did I put them here we are so you want it dry I know we're stamping with a permanent ink but it will stamp better if, if the surface it's stamping on is dry let's try and get my writing and I don't want to do it central I just want it off center you know, I have a thing about if you put things in the centre, they've got to be bang on centre. So I'd rather go off centre me. But again, that's just one of my little quirks. You know what I'm like, you know, I have them. So if you want yours in the centre, by all means, you stamp in the centre. And I just think that in itself is so nice. Now, somewhere I have put... I've got the little, I want to add this lovely little word stamp here. Ah, there we go. I couldn't, it was on one of my blocks and I couldn't quite see it. I need to check it's the right way up. But this, just for me, this design here almost looks a bit unfinished. And with the being, I have this thing about the flowers, if there's a stem, it's floating. So I just want to almost ground it in a way. And I'm going to use this stamp to do that. Just got a bit of ink on my block there, so I'll clean that off. And again, I'm not so much worried about the writing. I just want to see how it will look good. Oh, some splodges just on the edge of the stem. There, I'm thinking. Just to almost complete this design. We're just extending the design. Yeah, and I like the way that. So we'll have a little bit at the top as well. So I'm just thinking we'll have just this, how much should we have? No, no, we want a bit less, don't we? Just that circular bit there. And then obviously with that rule of three, we're just going to put this end of the stamp coming over here. And again, I've just got a bit of ink on my block. Which if I don't wipe it off, I'll get it on my fingers and then... So I'm just going to overlap it slightly. I just want to check it straight. Yeah. So that is just... I've got the nice balance here. So I'm happy with that. So that's the stamping done. And what we need to do now is pop the lid on the ink pad. 
we want to add if we go back to our finished design we're going to color the flowers and cut them out now i've left the butterfly clear what i have done is just added some little flicks of ink it's almost that thing if i wanted color but i wanted it almost to still be very very clean and simple so i'm going to pop the topper to one side now the butterfly as i say all we're going to do is cut the butterfly out so you'd be glad to know i've got one here that i've cut out and then the flowers, I have got some here I've already coloured and cut out. And again, I've actually got some of my little ticker tape bits that I've already cut out. So that saves. But I just want to show you how I actually colour these. And it's a technique we have done together before, but it's a technique that um, I do love. And it's just, again, you colour however you want to colour, to be honest. But when you find something you like... If you're anything like me you want to just carry on with it so all i've done is put some of my wilted violet and this is the oxide onto my craft mat and what i'm going to do is just very very quickly watercolor paint almost a wash over the flowers and if you notice i don't go right to the edges because that's where i'm going to add my highlight and i'm just putting a wash of color over both these flowers now again you could actually leave them with just a wash if you wanted now while i've got a little bit of ink left on my mat there's not a lot here i'm just going to add a few specks of that color onto the butterfly just to coordinate it as i say i'm leaving it in black and white but i just want to add a few specks so it coordinates beautifully clean that up now, normally I would wait for this to dry. So again, I'll just... Now, as I say, you could leave them like this and have that lovely watercolour effect, which again is something I like doing. But I've got to be honest, I think the colours pop even more when they're finished off like this. And so I'm going to use my chalk pastel pencils, which I know I've been using a lot recently, but I am a bit obsessed with them. So this is the box I've got and it's 36 chalk pastel pencils. And I'm just mentioning it because a few of you have commented and asked me and in the Bice Bilo. And I have to say, I'm just <clears throat> a bit obsessed with them. So all I've done is I've got myself three colours And I've got the yellow, and if I show you on this one, just let me check, you can see, I've just added a little bit at the end where I've left it white. And again, what I love about this is that I'm not a clever colourist. There are some clever people that do lovely colouring. I just do what I do, and almost, it's got to be quick but effective. Then I'm going to go in with this purple, and this is my deep tone. And again, this stamp... Vipasha has shown us with the lines on the stamp where we would have that deeper colour. So the base of the leaves look. And then after that, I've got sort of this lighter sort of pinky more purple. But again, we've got pinks and purple in our stenciling, haven't we? So again, you're keeping that, those colour tones. I'm almost feathering a little bit more colour along the petals. And again, you get more in the middle look. Vipasha has drawn the line there to show you. And then to blend it in, I've got a cotton bud and this is a biodegradable cotton bud. And all you're going to do is just, what this does is because the pastel pencils, A, it blends the colour, which I think is nice. I love the effect, but also it almost fixes it. I do the same when I use my charcoal. I always, I use use my fingers when I'm using my charcoal but I find by doing that it smooths it but also it almost fixes it to the, the the card and it's as quick and simple as that and I just find it such a night like I say it's relaxing but you don't have to spend I, I dare say if you want to spend all day coloring that's brilliant but I've got to be honest I don't have the time <laughs> I mean, it's lovely if you have and you can do. So by all means, you know, if you're one of these clever crafters that does beautiful colouring, you do your beautiful colouring. For me, I just have to come up with something a bit sort of quick and effective. Um, 
So totally up to you. So what we will do next is we get our pieces together and I tend to use uh, finger lift tape. So I'm just going to put some finger lift tape on this. And this is the bit where you almost need to multitask. You need to pat your head and rub your tummy. Remember when we used to do that when we were little? Because what we want to do is we want to attach this here, but also we've got our two little bits that we want to pop under, don't we? Now, I have this thing where I like to use finger lift tape, but I also add some wet glue. And I always say it's like belt and braces. So I'm using the belt to stop my trousers falling down, but just in case my belt goes, I'm putting my braces on as well. So that's why I use the two forms of wet glue and double-sided tape. Again, I'm just going to move that around. Oh, this is a bit where... <laughs> The best way I found it was I lined it up like this and you have got wiggle time because your tape is still on. Right, so I pressed it down in the middle because the middle can stay. Now this, we're going to slide up. So if I just put that in the bottom and I'm thinking about there. It would help if I remember to add a little bit of... So how many of you were shouting at me then? You haven't put any glue on the back. You were saying, get a grip, Joe. Now my friend Susan will be laughing at that because that's what Susan says at the workshops. It's her favourite little phrase. Comes with a sister, Janet, and she's always, get a grip, Joe. So if something doesn't work, that's what she says and we all end up saying it. It's not an expression I've heard of many people. So... There we go, Janet and Susan, you've got a mention. Right, bit of glue on there. So again, if I pull this one down, but not all the way down, let me think, does that look about, oh, that looks about right. Yep, just nudge it a little. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then pull that and then take that off. And then, there we go. Now, as I say, on my original, I put that on a card blank. The reason I'm not putting this one on a card blank is I might pop this one in my journal. Um, one lady was asking me about the journals and what I tend to do is, so this, to add it to my journal, I will just add it to my journal page, but I may do a bit more stenciling here just to extend it, almost do another matte and layer like this. Maybe even put another couple of these numbers in. Maybe even another butterfly. But that's what I tend to do. So quite often, one I'll make a card out of and then the other I'll pop in my journal. So we've got our butterfly and we've got our two flowers. And what I'm thinking is we'll just use a little bit of the same glue. I do hope you're keeping well. How are things going? I must admit the sun here has made such a difference for a lot of people and dare I say lockdown is easing a little bit um, so that helps as well. Um, I know a couple of you ladies have been in touch in Australia and you've had terrible floods so I hope you're all okay, I hope you're keeping safe. There seems to be something all the time doesn't there? I think um, nature seems to be throwing a few things at us. Now, to put my butterfly on, I'm using this, and this is my pin, pin Flare 3D Glue Gel. And so what I'm going to do, I want it slightly raised. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit in the middle to hold the middle. And then I want a bigger blob either side. Now, again, I'm thinking that looks nice just there. If I press that down, oh, got a bit of glue sneaking out there. And then that will takes overnight to dry, but it dries absolutely solid. So remember, a little bit poking up before you put your lid on. I've known people um, glue shower doors with it. Um, one gentleman is wing mirror. 
to his car. So it is a, a very good glue to use. But it does take overnight to dry. So that is our design so far. A couple little finishing tricks. Often we draw our shadow in, don't we? And um, we use our pencils. But this time I thought I'd use something a bit different. So if any of you've got these, it's the Zig Clean Colour. And it's a, a brush nib. And I just thought I'm going to use the grey black. I thought it would be a bit harsh. So what I've done is just, and with it having a brush nib, it's lovely to just add. And I wanted to actually attach everything to my card first just so I could see and especially with the butterfly I can actually see in the light where the and with it having the brush nib look I can just and I can actually see where these shadows it was quite funny when I photographed my first one it was difficult to tell which was an actual shadow from the light and which was the shadow that I'd drawn on with my pen And I just like the grey for a change. I thought that was really nice. And what I did was I just went along here, look. And just down here. Let's pop his wings up. And again, don't be too hard on yourself. It's a shadow. So along the bottom. And we'll have one just along the bottom of there. And just because... I just added a couple on these sort of circle bits. I thought that added to the dimension. And that line down there, I like that with a... Really, it's up to you. You can just go and add. But it just, again, nice little touch. I need to lift his wing up a bit. There we go. I've just splodged him a bit. And then the very final is... You know how we're not quite often... Oh. So I've got to do this, the uh, glue's just poking out there and I don't want that. So I'll move it up a bit. There we go, that's better, sorry. I couldn't, I don't want that glue dry in there. I've got to get rid of that. Right, just wipe my hands. <laughs> so quite often we add white Posca, don't we? Well, this, I thought the yellow would just bring out those highlights of yellow there. So as always, just need to shake my Posca pen up. And then we're just going to add some flicks of the yellow. I want a little bit on my butterfly, not too much. And then I'm just going to turn this round. It's quite funny because the number of times I get splats on my, <laughs> my iPad. Do we need another one there? Oh, well, we certainly got one, didn't we? Right, that's enough, missus. Don't go over the top, no pizzas. And now I'm just going to wipe round here because <laughs> that's the trouble. You get it there, then you'll get it on the back of your card. So there we go. Now that didn't take long, did it? And I've got to be honest, I really enjoyed that. Oh, I like that line there. I hope you did. I hope it's given you some ideas of what to do. And, and this, I hope you do this because these little embellishments are just a given. I mean, look how they finish off. I must admit, I'm always looking what's on my desk. And look, I'm thinking, I've got one of those. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Again, it's lovely. You can just, your mind can wander, can't it? So if I bring the finished card in, the one, our sample one, and then the one we've made today, move my bit of paper over that had my uh, measurements on to tell you, because obviously I can't remember things. So there we go. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for spending time with me. And sincerely, um, I do thank you for your lovely comments. Um, you know, especially if I'm having a bad day, and we all have them, don't we? And um, when I read your comments, they are so uplifting. And some days, you know, when you're crafting, you think, oh, what if I do something and somebody doesn't like it? Or But your comments are just honestly totally uplifting so I do thank you very much for them and thank you for subscribing I do get a buzz when I see the numbers going up it is just lovely it gives me that warm fuzzy feeling <laughs> so I'm going to leave you in peace now so as I say I hope you have a go at this or something similar I'd love to see what you do um thank you to the ladies that emailed me as well 
So if you're not on Facebook or you're not on social media with any of the groups, do feel free to email me. Um, my email's on my blog. Um, you know, and it's lovely to see what you do. And it's nice to feel that we're connected. It is such a lovely, lovely, uh, happy, crafty little family on here. And I do feel very blessed for that. So you all take care. So whether you, it's good morning to you, good afternoon or good evening, or it might even be night, night time for bed. Whatever time of day it is, you stay safe. Thanks for watching. You take care. Bye for now.